In this tutorial, which will have several parts, I want to show how you can create your own toolset which can be accessed from the block diagram palette. This particular example I'm going to show adds a toolset to the add-ons palette. It is a custom key value store that uses an external function library. I have kept things fairly simple and I'm not going to create any stuff during this tutorial because it's quite much. Instead, there's a link in the description to a zip file that contains all the files that I will go through. These functions are based on an open source key value store called UnQLite. I chose this function library because it is easy to use, comes in two C code files and compiles as is. It does not require any separate server, but stores data directly to file or in main memory. UnQLite uses byte arrays for all its storage. In LabVIEW, this corresponds to strings. Any object can be converted to a string and then back again, and that's why the palette contains the flatten to string and unflatten from string functions for easy access. Calling external functions is of course no way near as fast as the variant attribute functions, but UnQLite offers much more sophisticated operation. For starters, it supports iterators, which I have made available in the tool palette. This is an example of what the functions can do and how they are used, which is quite similar to other tool sets in LabVIEW. In this example, I first create the store. I have not set any file path, so it will create a temporary store in main memory. Setting a file path will store values to that file. The string constant defines this as a storage using string keys. More about this in a moment. I did not open an existing store from file, so I know that a new store was created. Then there's a for loop, where I store 10 key value pairs, just counting from 0 to 9. I'm not replacing any values, so this connector returns false for all operations. After the loop, I open an iterator, the iterator will step through the whole store from start to finish and return all key value pairs along the way. The first function in the loop checks whether there is anything left or end of stream was reached. If there is, then values are received and converted. Otherwise, the iterator and store are closed. Note that the iterator must be closed before the store. And here's the list returned when running the program. This toolset is constructed using the VI package manager, which can be downloaded from this page. It compiles all the files needed into a package that can then be distributed and installed on any machine that has the package manager installed. The free version of the package manager has a few restrictions, but works fine for what I'm going to demonstrate. This library contains all the VIs for the project. It has custom error handling, which I will talk about in a later part. Then there are some interface VIs, they are all polymorphic. These are the classes used. And lastly, there's a VI for handling a menu option that is installed in the help menu. The VIs that say KV string or similar take a string as the key, but I have also included classes that take an integer as a key, even though this functionality is easy to implement manually. This is to show how polymorphic VIs can be used to determine program operation. In the previous example, a string constant is used to define the type of storage. Exchanging the constant with a number constant 
will cause all VIs to be switched out for once using integer keys instead. Now here's a quirk. Changing the type will break the reference wire and not the string wire. It would be slightly more logical to have the other wire break, but I have no idea how to change type precedence or if it's even possible. Removing the string wire, all VIs will change and now want an integer key. The other reason for using a specialized key is to show how dynamic dispatch connectors can be used. The kvstore openVI for example takes the kvstore class as input, stores a pointer to the open key value store and then returns the class object. However, this VI is declared protected because it does not determine the type of store and should not be used. That's what the KV string store open and KV integer open VIs are for. They are member VIs of the KV string class and KV integer class respectively, both classes inheriting the KV store class. The string open VI defines a string store object and calls the store open VI. Thanks to the dynamic dispatch, the object is returned with the class type preserved. Likewise, the integer open VI defines an integer store object, which is returned intact as well. The iterator classes behave in the same way. A property of classes that I discovered only recently is that icons are inherited and not just distributed among member VIs. Applying an icon to VIs will copy the icon to all descendant classes. If we look at the base iterator class, which is inherited from the base storage class, it looks a bit barren. But its member VIs have icons that look like this because they inherit their appearance not just from the class definition, but from ancestral class definitions as well. Thank you for watching.